good morning to one and all uh, i hope all the other panelists are online dr balraju and dr zeshanko can you just uh, unmute, unmute yourself and put on your videos please so in the interest of time we have a very good presentation and i don't want to take a lot of time so the whole idea of the basics series was to concentrate on the basics as the case may be and today we're going to start the series with the bronchial branch tracing technique uh, by uh, dr ko who's going to talk about his uh, technique and how they do it at sarawak in malaysia uh, i'm dr kedar i bring greetings to you dr narayana vice manche and uh, uh, also from the cardiac sciences building which is our campus on the outskirts of bangalore phone number na password and uh, what is important is there are three different techniques maneuverability techniques navigational techniques and confirmation techniques for peripheral pulmonary lesions and there's just more and more equipment that is coming our way so what's important for us to understand it it doesn't matter how many resources we have but what is important is to use them well and the more gear we have the more likely we are going to be confused so the whole idea of this program was to get back to our basics understand anatomy and what's up, what's up. we can in our circumstances and like leonardo da vinci said simplicity is the ultimate sophistication ladies and gentlemen i have the honor of introducing dr ko uh, zeshan he completed his medical training in 2010 and his mrcp in 2014 he also did his national respiratory medicine training in malaysia and was an ers diplomat in 2021 he also was the awardee of the prestigious ers clinical training fellowship for ild and did training and rotation at the royal brompton so with this i just leave you with dr jiang for uh, telling us his technique on the bronchial branch tracing thank you and of course with me on the panel is dr balraju tarikonda he is a consultant interventional pulmonologist at uh, gayatri hospital in wisag and beyond that i don't think he needs introduction so many people know him already so over to you dr koshan hey thanks kada um let me share my screen first um i hope everyone can see my screen yes great okay so um first of all thanks uh, kada and dr bala for inviting um i probably would not say we are expert in this but uh we just for you to share our experience on what we do day in day out using this technique uh when we approaching solitary pulmonary nodules so background uh i think most of us know where malaysia is uh we actually located in east malaysia uh in the state of sarawak in the uh, sarawak general hospital on the island uh, of borneo so we are a 900 to around 900 to 1000 bed tertiary referral hospital um located in the uh, beautiful city of kuching so um after the pandemic um hopefully everyone can visit us all right um first of all i think uh we really need to acknowledge this gentleman um prof noraki kurimoto i think everyone uh, who dove into this session know about him uh he's the one who pioneered this uh, bronchial branch uh, reading technique and initially he only came up with this japanese version book uh I still remember during that time uh, my mentor Dr T actually bought one of this book and then uh, during every weekend we would try to use google translate or any other methods to actually crack uh crack down what is actually written inside so now uh you can actually purchase this uh translated version on uh, on springer so yeah so i have the honor to met uh, prof krimoto in 2017 uh, unfortunately the um the knowledge did not just diffuse over to my brain yeah So briefly today I'll talk about the uh a guided bronchoscopy for PPL uh a brief introduction to manual bronchial branch reading technique and of course I'll show a few cases uh which will start for some very simple basic level to a uh, more advanced level and then of course I'll talk about our experience So for guided bronchoscopy for PPL uh to me that's that's these few steps it it's basically like you want to deliver a parcel to someone So first you need to know your target who are you going to who are you going to first so we need to analyze the uh, target properly the bronchus sign do we really need to biopsy uh, is the lesion high risk you know things like that after that once you decided you need to choose your steering device you know uh, if you are prestigious enough you have the uh, robotic 
uh, it'll be good. You know, we are using ultra thin scope. If not, you have you using your guide shift and curette and things like that. And then after that, you will need a roadmap to how to reach to your target. So we have BBN, you have ENB, and you have uh, your bronchial bunch reading technique, whatever technique to actually help you to reach your uh, your target. So once you reach your target, you need to verify. So you know, verification technique is very important. So you have radio EBAS, combined CT, lung vision, et cetera, et cetera. Once you verify your navigation, then only you start to do your biopsy through forcep, needle, cryo, et cetera, et cetera. So how it all started with us. So we have started our radio EBAS, I think in 2016. So frequently after analyze the CT, I look at the airway, we look at the airway as such, then the question is where to go. You know, of course, you know, you can argue that you can pump your radio probe into all the seg segments, but you know, what's the fun of that? And you know, you really take up a lot of time. So the roadmap, of course, we, we, we used to have lung point for a short period of time. If you have lung point, the VBN, it would just guide you through uh, to your target vision as shown. Um, ENB, it's, it's a real-time navigation through electromagnetic uh, navigation. Uh, of course, if you do, do not have all these uh, advanced tools, even just the free software horrors, you can just do a virtual bronc uh, in, in this, you know, we can just reconstruct the uh, virtual bronchoscopy through the, the fly-through uh, application through horrors. So all these things give you a roadmap, but of course, how sensitive it, it will depend on the CT scan and actual detection. So, um, I mean, this manual manual mapping is not a new thing. I think uh, Alex Chen had published in 2016 in, uh, the annals. I think this is in annals of ATS, um, which they used the uh, the CT in the MPR reconstruction to look at to construct a roadmap for themselves. So in this study, they actually the navigation success is 95.4 percent, which is defined by um, successful identification by radio e bus. However, the uh, diagnostic yield is only 58.9. So always that, you know, navigation success does not mean a uh, uh, conclusive diagnostic yield. So I think most of us understand this uh, issue. So next, of course, is bronchial branch reading technique. It's basically to translate CT images into bronchoscopy images. So I think this, this is a very uh, interesting uh, 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 technique, which over the years we have really uh, gained patience on, on this technique. So, you know, we will say this is almost like a ninja skill. You have to navigate yourself through the narrow airway. You know, you have to identify which airway to go. So it's quite satisfying once you, you know, sort of master a bit of it. Yeah. So I think the basic uh, anatomy is still very important. This is the foundation. So I think we just go through this. Uh, I'll have labeled all the important airway, the segmental airway from on CT. So I think to reach all this area, we, you probably will not need navigation. Just, just if you have do enough bronchoscope, you will know how to reach there easily. So all this ostium is very important. So I think that's that's the starting point when you want to navigate to any place. So I think it's very important to, to identify RB1 to 10 and LB1 plus 2 to uh, LB10. So of course, next we talk about the basic bronchoscopic segmental airway anatomy. Uh, I think most of you will, I mean, most of us will, will know the basic anatomy. This one, I'll just, I'll just do it a bit more distal so so this we are seeing a right upper lobe bronchus so uh this video will take a bit long so this is rb3 so 3a and 3b all right then you move to the other side which is the apica segment the rb1 rb2a rb2b all right so i mean there's a lot of variation in all these area branching so you know like this patient so obviously it would not be the same for the, the next patient so the right middle lobe bronchus, so four and five, and observe the bifurcation orientation. So these are the typical 4A, 4B, 5A, 5B uh, uh, direction. So we have six, seven. So six, we usually have uh, two, and then the apical one divide into two again. And then we have the seven with us at nine, 10. So seven A and B. I'll go to the nomenclature letter. So just we just, I mean, everyone get the warm up first because eventually you'll see a lot of CT and a lot of scope images. I understand uh, India time now is around 11.30. So I'll try to finish it within an hour. So everyone can go for lunch. So this is RB910. So sometimes you see an accessory segment. So you, you might not know what, you know, what location is that. You need to look at the CT. All right, then we go to the left side. 
So this scope is done with a therapeutic scope, six millimeters, so we cannot go very far. So left upper lobe bronchus, and we got lingular as well as left upper divisional bronchus. So interestingly, you just look at, uh, you know, these are all the things we're going to go through later. The beyond plus two ABC, three ABC. So this is a classic left upper lobe bifurcation. And then we got the lingular, four, five. And then we move down, I think, yeah. So we're down to LB6, six again, branch to two. I didn't, I think I didn't go in in this video. So at nine, 10, and we have, can see one accessory bronchus at a lateral aspect. Yeah. Okay, so I think this is the basic. So we, we, we all have to know all this and the basic anatomy first before we, we want to embark on a, a more distant navigation. So this is uh, the picture that uh, I've taken out from uh, Prof. Kurimoto's book. So these two images is stick on our Scott room in, in Kuching. Each room have one of these uh, uh, F4 papers to stick on the wall to, to remind us how is the orientation and things like that. So I think it's very important. So the concept of bronchial branch reading techniques, so um, please bear with me if I, conf if I confuse you. So when we look at CT scan, we actually look from the inferior aspect. So this is by default, uh, we look at the CT scan from inferior aspect, okay? And when we're doing bronchoscopy, we are actually looking the whole airway from superior aspect, all right? So take some time to digest this. So how are we going to switch the images from what we view inferiorly to what we are viewing superiorly? So if you think of it, if you have a petal in front of you, you basically would just flip it. So when you flip it, it become the CT become you view from superiorly. So this is the first basic concept of how we flip and things like that. Okay. So after that, we look at the airway uh, orientation. So when we're looking at the low lobe, it's all direct viewing as in, you know, your eyes will look down to both airway, left side or right side, it doesn't matter. All right. So when we're looking at right middle lobe, because right middle lobe angled anteriorly. So we are actually looking also downwards, but a bit more anteriorly. But the direction of viewing is still aiming inferiorly. Okay. Lingular, same thing. We're still aiming inferiorly. All right. But because lingular, the orientation is slightly to medial to lateral. So we are having a, a sort of, you know, downward, but lateral direction of viewing but whatever it is they are all viewing direct inferiorly so if you want to map all this region you need to flip your ct scan all right so this is a photo showing uh lingular it's uh uh the orientation of lingular is actually medial to lateral okay and then uh right middle lobe is from posterior to i mean posterior to anterior so so yeah all right but now we go come to upper lobe. So when we, if you, if you are doing scope regularly, when you go to upper lobe, you push your scope down, you do a counter counterclockwise turn, and then you will flex the lever down. So when you flex the lever down, you are actually changing your viewing direction back to, uh, you know, you were viewing the airway from below, from inferior aspect. So if you remember, this is what happened uh, with your CT scan. So that's the reason that when you do left upper lobe or right upper lobe, you do not need to flip your CT, all right? So hence upper lobe lesion, you rotate the CT uh, to the opposite direction, but you do not need to flip the CT. So when you do right upper lobe, when you're doing the scope, when you're engaging right upper lobe, you are doing a clockwise turn. So you turn the CT the other way around, counterclockwise. When you go to left upper lobe, you turn clockwise. So you turn your CT clockwise. I hope that makes sense to everyone. So this concept actually took us uh, uh, one year, uh, me and Dr. T, to sit down and uh, argue, not argue, like, I mean discuss every day until we have agreed that I think we think this is the right, right message that uh, Prof. Kurimoto wants to pass across in his book. So I think this is very important. Uh, I don't want to confuse you, but when you look at CT, I think we're all familiar that's an axial, axial plan, sagittal plan, as well as a coronal plan. So, yeah, so these are, there are three plans. But when you're doing scope, 
uh, there's another Z plan. It's how when you move your scope forward or you retract your scope. So just imagine when you go to upper lobe, all right? When you go to upper lobe, you, you know, uh, on your left side is anterior, right side is posterior, medial is up there, lateral is down there. But when you push your scope in, you're actually going in the inferior to superior axis. So your scope is going higher, higher, higher. So I think this axis is very important because uh, uh, it will tell you which direction and, you know, and things to, you know, where to go when you have a node you. So there are three axes, I have to remember. So always try to sort out the axis, uh, the, the three axes, all right, which I will, I will show in the cases later. So that's your scope direction. So, uh, yeah, so we need at least a one millimeter CT scan, volumetric CT. Um, if you read Kurimoto book, most of his uh, recommendation is in Excel CT. So right upper lobe, counterclockwise 90 degree. Right middle lobe, you flip vertical axis. B6, vertical axis flip. Uh, right lower lobe, vertical axis flip. Left upper lobe, clockwise 90 degree. Lingular, B6 and left, left lower lobe, you flip a vertical axis. Uh, for our experience, of course, we follow this initially, um, but over the time we found that, you know, uh, there are few, few recon actually is better for certain lobes. Um, yeah, so for right upper lobe, the surgical, if you want to look at the right upper lobe osteum, you want to look at how RB123 branches out, you put it as surgical, and then you scroll, and then you, you, will, you will know. Right middle lobe, we will use coronal, and we flip it. RB6, we will maintain it in neutral, we don't flip it, uh, but we use coronal uh, recon. Yeah, so I think this is a bit complicated, never mind. Left upper lobe, again, if you want to look at the osteum, I use sagittal to look at it. Lingular, I will use the flip sagittal. Uh, B6, of course, I'll use neutral coronal, uh, going in the reverse approach. So yeah, all right, I think this is very theory. We'll just go to the cases. So the next thing is when we look at the airway, how are we going to draw it? So this is from Hope Kurimoto book. If you see two airway like that, you see two circle like that, it's the best. To me, it's the best image you want to uh, obtain, right? So you just follow the size of the bronchus, uh, the branching angle, everything, just follow, just draw it out, like what I've, I've shown in the slide. If you get horizontal branch like that, you're supposed to draw the bifurcation side by side, all right, side by side. If you get a vertical horizontal branch, you have to draw it up and down. So this is the key uh, messages from the book. Um, that's one more bifurcation they call the horizontal oblique. To be honest, I still cannot comprehend uh, with my brain. So uh, if anyone have any idea, please let me know. I still don't know what's going on with this horizontal oblique thing. Right. So to me, the desired airway visualization, we have to get the image that it's perpendicular to air branching so that we can get these two nice uh, hole like that. You know? So it's easier for us to draw. So this is a recon airway from ENB. So you can see for the for right upper lobe, it go up and up and up. So if you use Excel scan and cut here, you will get this kind of images, all right? Lower lobe as well, because it's go down and down and down, you will just use Excel scan, you will get two holes like that. So it's easy. The issue comes with right middle lobe. As I mentioned just now, anterior, uh, I mean, middle lobe actually direct towards anterior. So if you use Excel, you will see a lot of horizontal branching. So if you use coronal and you, cut it, you know, then you will see things like that. Of course, lingular, it's actually direct towards, uh, I mean, from medial to lateral direction. So if you're using a sagittal recon and cut it, you can get a per perpendicular cut and you can get this very nice airway. Okay, I hope I'm making sense. All right, let's proceed. So uh, how to name the airway? I think, yeah. So generally, I think if you follow the, the European or the US uh, uh, literature, they usually take right main bronchus as first generation. I'm not too sure why Japanese usually take right upper lobe bronchus as first generation. It's according to their uh, uh, Cancer Society uh, nomenclature. So um, we, have, we have been following the Japanese classification. So um, right upper lobe bronchus as first generation. So compared to the, uh, the European and the American, of course, uh, the Japanese is one generation higher than, than them, yeah. So the Japanese classification of nomenclature, there's a rule, rule, there's a rule to it, all right? So if that's, uh, that's the priority of the airway, if you want to name it. So first priority, if 
there's a superior to inferior branch, that's the first priority. Second, if there's a posterior to anterior branch, followed by lateral to medial. Okay, so you just imagine RB1, 2, 3. So you ask yourself why they name it as such. So you see number one is a apical, so it's a superior uh, uh, bifurcation. So that get a priority, you get number one. So number two, the posterior one get the, the second name, RB2. And then the last one go to RB3. So, you know, all, all, all these things, these are just the rules. So, you know, RB4 and 5, because 4 is lateral, then 5 is medial. So this is how they name it. And by every uh, subsequent generation, they will give A, B, 1 or 2 or 3, alpha, beta, X and Y. After that, don't know. You know, you can name it whatever you want. Okay, so A, 1, alpha, and X. So I think the nomenclature is not very important in my uh, opinion. Uh, it's important when you know how to do it and uh, when you communicate with your colleagues, uh, you know, when you're doing reporting, which I, 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 every time I stress that reporting is very important. Uh, yeah, so those who know me will know I stress a lot <laughs> on reporting. Uh, so when you talk to your colleagues, you tell, okay, I'm in the alpha airways. Then, then, then they have a sense that, okay, it's a very difficult case, you know, things like that. And, uh, you know, but you do not need to know exactly which, which bifurcation or things like that. So in the book as well, uh, I think Prof. Krimoto mentioned in the actual bronch examination, expressing the direction of the next generation bronchial opening, like up, down, left, right, upper right, loft, you know, things like that is, is useful without mentioning the name of the bronchus. So when we do scope, we will not mention, okay, you go to alpha, you go to beta. No, no, no one, no one can, can know that, I think. But for reporting sake, for uh, eventually audit, I think it's very important. If you don't name it, you want to retrospectively look it back, it would be very difficult. Yeah. So I'll go to few level, which I think I'll classify them as level one is uh, beginner level until level five is uh, expert as I mean, advanced level. All right, so level one are lesions within second to third generation target. So like RB1A, all right? So first case, RB4SPN, under, underlying rectal CN remission. So question is this metastatic or primary lung cancer. I think everyone get this kind of referral before. So you look at the CT scan, it's somewhere here, very middle, uh, medially located. Radiologists will not be comfortable to put a needle in. It's near the fissure. You know, uh, they have to bypass a lot of uh, I mean, pure pneumothorax will be high. So you look at the CT here, this axial scan. So you saw that, okay, there might be an airway going in, but the airway might pass through. So you're not very sure because it's horizontal branching. You are, okay, I want to try my luck to go in. This one might go in, you know, not very sure. But of course, I, I, I believe a lot of you are very experienced. At one glance, you know that's an airway going in. But when we started, you know, in lateral branching like that, it's very difficult for us to see. So, if you follow my slide just now, I will go coronal approach with this CT. So this is the standard coronal uh, uh, CT scan. I do, a I do a flip, vertical flip, all right? So now the right is my bronchoscopy right, the left is my bronchoscopy left, okay? So you're looking at this, so that's, this is the right middle lobe, so this orientation. So very simple, you look at the CT, you know this is superior, you know this is inferior, and you know this is medial and that's lateral. That's according to CT. And there is what exactly you will see during your scope. All right, so let's follow me. All right, I will just show, show you around how, how, to, how I draw it. So this is the right middle lobe. Okay, so this one circle here. So I get two like that. Oops, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, so you follow me, that's this right middle lobe. So it's split like that, four, five. Okay, and then you see four split again, four A, four B, and then four A just engulfed by tumor, All right? Very simple case. So this kind of this kind of case is really very simple. We probably would not do under fluoroscopy as well because it's just one generation, you know, from from right middle lobe. And of course, you expect there there will be endobronchial lesion as this case have shown at RB four A. All right, so. But usually, generally, we still put in our EBAS and guide shift uh, to prevent bleeding because I don't want to bite and bleed and things difficult. So we just put in the guide shift, we get a concentric image, we just start biting 10 rounds, then we come out and that's it. All right, so this case proven to be metastatic adeno CA, rectal origin. So this is a very straightforward case. 
And if you, for this case, if you look back on the serial scan, you can look at, this is RB5, this is RB4. You can see RB4A is gradually engulfed by the tumor. So in certain circumstances, when you're not too sure which airway you want to go in, always look, at, look back at the previous scan. Then you will know very sure that, okay, the tumor is from this, this airway, I will go in this, that airway. All right, so this is case number one. So this is the orientation of right middle lobe. Uh, so if you remember my CT just now, superior, inferior lateral media is exactly what you will see uh, when, you, when you do the scope, okay, four, five, all right? And when you are moving your scope in and out, the Z axis, you are moving your scope posterior to anterior. So if you are doing fluoroscopy, you can see your scope actually coming head on to you. So you are moving in the posterior anterior plane. Okay, all right. So case number two, still a uh, uh, level one difficulty. We have a, a L, LB8 SPN, had a bit with bone mat, mid histology diagnosis, all right? So this is a lower lobe. So you see left is, you know, left and right. This is left, obviously. So I'll use axial because it's lower lobe. Uh, I want to get the airway perpendicular, you know, when I, you know, when I scroll it. So I want to do it in axial because lower lobe is actually N, I mean, branch inferiorly directly, all right? But I want to flip it. So right become right, left become left on my view, okay? So when you look at this ostium, so again, just follow the CT orientation, anterior, posterior, lateral, media, that's what we're going to get when we do wrong. So let's follow. So I'm scrolling, so you can see this is LB, I don't know why, I'm oh, sorry, man. okay? So you can see this, this one branch into two, LB8, LB9 plus 10. So LB8 branch again, at A, at B. You can see lateral one with nemid first. Then at A actually go straight into the tumor. So it's again, a very straightforward case. Okay, if you look at down there, it's split to nine, 10. Nine, a lateral branch go in as well. So for this, for this uh, target, you have two airway going in. So usually, if possible, I'll sample from these two to, to make sure I you know, get a very conclusive diagnosis. So this is the actual wrong image. You can see it. it's exactly like how we plan. A, B, 9, 10, all right? So when we put in LB at A, you get a concentric image. So in this case, uh, I prior to biopsy, I put a 19 gauge TBN needle because somehow that them, our pathologist is with us. We already can see a lot of cancer cell and then we proceed with biopsy. And uh, it's adenose TA with EGFR positive. So the segmentation of loba airway is very important. In this case, it's right upper lobe bronchus. So, so this is the bronchoscopy image, and this is the uh, sagittal plan of the, the SAM image. So you can see the target is at the apical region. So in this kind of case, you will not know which hole you want to go in unless you pop in all the hole. Of course, you can, but it will take time, and you might miss some, 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 some you know, branching and things like that. But if you compare this CT to your actual bronch image, they actually look very similar. Okay, one, two, three, four. So you know you need to go to the, uh, the, 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 the lumen in your upper right. Okay, then you will go straight to the lesion. So to look at the right upper lobe and left upper lobe ostium, to me, it's very good if you use sagittal, you can really catch the, uh, the orientation. So this is left upper divisional bronchus. So again, we get two uh, holes like that. That's your LB3 and LB1 plus two. And uh, this is another case. So generally, uh, I named this one plus two CLB3A. I think if you do, if you see a lot of left upper lobe before, you know the lateral branch, there's always one from LB1 plus two and there's one from LB3. So the LB1 plus two C and the LB3A is the one supplying the lateral aspect of the left upper lobe. But in this case, both of them come together as one and they give you a tripartite left upper lobe. And it's very simple. You can see one, two, one, two, three. So the lateral branch goes straight into the tumor. So it's very simple. You put your radio prop there, you get concentrated lesion and you bite it. So, uh, you know, there's no surprise there when you do all this planning. When you plan like that, you go in, you will not be surprised. They have to be there. And if you cannot find something there, you know, you have to find until you found it because it's, it's going to be there, you know, if you, if you just believe on your anatomy analysis. All right, so we go to level two. Uh, so this is, these are lesions in fourth uh, airway generation. So you 
typically like RV1A1 or things like that. Okay. So uh, we have a RV5A2 SPN, underlying colon CN remission. Again, question is MATS or primary lung CA. So lingular lesion, you look at uh, axial scan. Again, a lot of horizontal branching. Say, well, there might be an airway going in. Maybe not, not too sure. Okay. So if you remember, again, when I say lingular is directed from medial to lateral. So I will use sagittal. Okay. So sagittal view, flip, because... Yeah. Yep, so I do a 90 degree counterclockwise. So this is exactly what we saw during, what we will see during bronc. Again, follow your scope, anterior, posterior, inferior, superior, because now we have flip, you know, so the direction is like that. So when you move your scope, it's in the medial to lateral plane. All right? So let's go. So we got lingular there, split, four, five. Four is down there, five. We got five split again, five A, five B. So we follow five A. Five A split to two, A1, A2. So we're going with A2 and then engulfed by the tumor. So again, I think for, for, for us who do radio EBAS almost every day, you, you'll find this case actually quite simple, but you know, uh, if you plan like that, it's really very beautiful. And when you go in, you really feel very confident. So I'll show you the actual bronc image. So you do not need navigation to tell you how to reach lingular. I think everyone knows how to reach lingular. So this is left upper divisional, left, left upper divisional and lingular. Okay, four, five, five A. And this, I'm using a therapeutic scope, I don't, cannot go in further. Okay, but I know it's somewhere there. You know, if I just go into this lumen, I will find the lesion there. Okay. So this is the, the bronchoscopic video. I know inside, 5A, there's another two bifurcation, the A2 and A1. And I know I need to end my tools to A2. All right. So this, this can, I mean, radio EBAS come very important in this uh, 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 situation because you need that very verification technology. So if you put, you have a fluoroscopy, it might not be good unless you bite from both lumen, uh, you know, but you, you might bite into nothing in LV5A1. Okay. So radio EBAS become very important in this uh, juncture. So of course, we put in EBAS, you get an eccentric lesion. In this case, uh, we perform a cryobiopsy. So we, we put a balloon in first, then we use a 1.7 millimeter cryoprobe because it's sort of eccentric. We don't want to take risks. We just proceed with a cryobiopsy. And uh, fortunately, we get the answer. It's a metastatic colorectal CA. So, you know, this same case, if you put into EMB, it will perform, it will perform perfect, perfectly well as well. You know, you see, it will bring you to Lingula. It will show you that 5A, 5 five and four bifurcation nicely, you know. It performed very well. If you use EMB, I can be sure you will get it 100% as well. But again, do you really need to use EMB? You open up the shift, it's almost three, 400 US dollar, you know, I, I'm not too sure. If you use Holros fly through, you know, you can get it as well. So it's really, you know, at this generation of airway, I think it's either you use bronchial mapping or you use VVN, you can reach that area, okay? So lingular log 4.5. So generally we use a uh, sagittal CT, we flip horizontally and then we rotate 90 counterclockwise and it gives you this kind of orientation, anterior, posterior, superior, inferior. And then uh, this is orientation, but when you move your scope, it's in the medial to lateral plane. All right, I hope everyone is still okay. So now we go to the next level. So these are the tumors in the fifth generation target. So you will generally name it like RB1A1 alpha. Okay. All right. So Rapalot SPN, CD guided biopsy in other centers, shown necrotic tissue. So referred to us. Okay. Let's go. So this is Rapalot. Exhale recon, 90 degree counterclockwise, because when you go to up right upper lobe on your scope, you will do a clockwise turn. CT, you will do a counterclockwise turn. All right. So right upper lobe will correspond to medial, lateral, anterior, posterior, just like your CT. So this is what you're going to get when you do bronc. Okay, then we should start. So this is arbitrary. And then we go to, yep, let's follow my cursor. There's RB1 and RB2. Arb2 branch into two. Okay. And then to be branch another two. 
the two, then you follow the 2B1, the one up there, split to another two, and then both went in. Okay, so again, this will not be a very difficult case, but of course, it's more uh, advanced say, way. Okay, so then you do a scope. Then you, the right upper lobe actually look like this. Then you ask back yourself, how does it compare to this? You know, it looks a bit weird. You know, you know that's three lumen like that, but now it looks like this. So it looks a bit weird. So always go back to your surgical recon. Then you look at this, okay? Now it looks quite comparable, am I right? You get one up here, second one here, and third one here. So this, then when you trace, you know the lesion is from the second one. So this is your RB2, and you know that's where you should go. So when you go to RB2, uh, you know, you see this 2A two, two and 2B. Two and when you look at 2B, actually there's already some endobronchial lesion there. So of course, you know, I'm using a therapeutic scope. I cannot go in further, uh, but you know, inside this lumen, you get another two bifurcation and you go to the higher one, that's another two bifurcation, but whichever you go in, you will get, a, get the diagnosis. So it's quite easy, all right? So I'll just shove our radio e bus in. Uh, you get a concentric image. Biopsy. So this patient is a uh, uh, it's a TBL nodule. I mean, the guide sheet flashing is positive for TBPCR, and the the biopsy is representative as well. So right upper lobe, uh, B one two three. This is how it typically or normally bifurcate a uh, trifurcate, but a lot of time you don't get this nice uh, uh branching. So you need always go back to a CT and correlate. So these are the orientation that I've mentioned just now. So when you are doing all these things with a therapeutic scope, sometimes it's very difficult because you know how airway branch distally, but you cannot reach there. So you cannot actually maneuver your tools there. So this bi-directional guiding device come very handy. So if you can see this case, this tumor here, if you put your scope here, your scope will follow whatever tools that you come out from the scope will follow the natural direction of the scope. It will go according to the green line. So it will definitely miss the lesion. All right. So and you know that's the airway that branch into the lesion. So that's why bidirectional guiding device is very important to change the course of the guide shift. So you can actually direct the guide shift into the lesion. All right. So in this case, if you without the guide, without the bidirectional guiding device, you will not be able to get the uh, uh, guide shift in. So again, this is another case. You can see that you know the red axis is the one you want to follow, but your scope keep going on the green axis, which you keep missing the lesion. So when you, when you go the green axis, you get nothing. But if you can ever to enter the lesion, of course, you get a concentric lesion. So this is a video showing, sorry, so we just talked about the uh, scope view first. So you, let's say you have, you, this is the furthest you can go, but you know you want to go to the higher up bronchus, you know. So you can use your guiding device to actually guide you. So in this way, you see, we can turn it and, or, and do whatever you want on, on fluoroscopic vision. To actually guide the, the forcep, I mean, sorry, guide the guide shift in to, to perform a biopsy. So I think it's very important because not everyone has ultra thin scope or thin scope. So uh, this will come in handy when you do uh, peripheral access with a uh, therapeutic scope. All right, we're still at level three. So this is a left upper divisional SPN to raw malignancy. Uh, it's high block risk. So very high up in the left upper lobe. So this, this you can expect will be quite difficult. So again, on Excel, we, we do 90 degree clockwise to make, to simulate the actual bronchoscopic uh, uh, image uh, that we are going to encounter. All right, so I'll focus on that region. Okay, so first lateral branch. Up there, branch like this. So this CT is not very good. So we, there's a lot of motion artifact there, so you can't see the airway properly, but we do know LB3 branch like that. So, you know, we follow it as such, the small branch there. And then the thing split to another two, I think. Not very sure, not very sure because it's not very good CT. Yeah, then we think it go in. So that's our map. I mean, at least we have a map to, 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 to do the bronc. All right, so, it's the actual bronc. So in this case, we are using the MP 190F, three millimeter scope. Okay, I'll just, uh... 
So we are navigating ourselves to the left upper divisional, okay, the lateral branch. Okay. Just follow my, my guide, Tracy. So next you see two, one small one up, one small one, one up, higher one. And then you're two, then you reach your target. And then to our surprise, you can actually see abnormal mucosa, right? So we are quite confident we are there. Okay. And then uh, we put our radial ebus in. And you can see a very nice concentric, I mean, eccentric image. All right. So this is uh, using the tin scope. Okay. And then, um, so this is how the tin scope can reach. Uh, uh, compared to a standard diagnostic, uh, diagnostic scope of five millimeter, all right? So it can really reach very distally. Um, sorry, is anyone seeing my screen flickering? No, Dr. Shang. Uh, no, it's, yeah, it's not flickering for us. It's not flickering, it's good. Oh, then it's my screen problem, I think. It's all right, I'll, I'll continue. Okay. So this is, if you just use a standard uh, five millimeter scope, you probably would not able to reach so, so deep in, all right? So you use a three millimeter scope, you can really go very deep in. Yeah, that's what the point is. So if you put this cast into uh, 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 ENB, you can see the peripheral resolution is actually very, very poor. And you can't really see any bifurcation, to be honest, compared to the actual uh, three millimeter uh, scope view, yeah. Okay. So yeah, so in this case, actually we got the uh, eccentric adjacent radio EBAS image. Um, the tin scope, we put in a 1.4 millimeter uh, forcep to biopsy it. And uh, expected you only get bronchial epithelium, although the is abnormal. So uh, in this case, fortunately, because of eccentric lesion, we put it back, we put in a bigger scope, and then we put in a cryo biopsy. And uh, of course it gives us adenosine lung. So, uh, yeah, I think it's very important when we look at the uh, images on the ENB, you can actually recon it on the, uh, what you call that, you know, you can see the actual orientation uh, and correlate to your actual scope view. So you look at ENB, uh, the 3D map, they actually miss a lot of small, small branches, which I think is very important when you, when you go into peripheral uh, region, because you might go into the wrong hole and that's it. So they actually miss a lot of bifurcation. So that's why we don't usually use EMD. All right, so we go to another level, level four. So this is the, this, the lesion in the sixth generation target. So RB1 SPN, brand mats, uh, pending histology. So we, again, we counterclockwise 90 degree to make it look like our brown image. So let's go. So we have RB123, I think uh, everyone should know by now how to look at it. So we focus on RB1. It's a very nice one. So RB1 is split like this, 1A, 1B. We're following 1B. So very long 1B and then it's split. And then it split again to a smaller one. And then it's split again to two. Okay, and then these two eventually go into the nodule. So you know, again, there's two bronchial signs, uh, but it's quite distal, all right? So, yep, so again, we go in with our tin scope. So RB123, RB1, you see two holes here, you go to B. So go, after going to B, you expect to see two. Yep, so we are seeing two. After that, you expect to see Another two with one smaller one. Yep, so it still fit. And then after that, you see another two. Yep, so that's another two. And then that's your target. All right, so when we put in our radio e bus, oh, so it's concentric. So, you know, it's very nice. You just follow the map and go in. Okay, so uh, initially we use a therapeutic scope. You can see this the maximum reach. If you max fraction, you only can see RB1 like that. So there's no point you can go in. And in this case, even with uh, QRED, 
or bidirectional guiding device, I think it will be very difficult to reach the target if, if there's no kin scope uh, available. So uh, you can see this case is adeno CA, GFI negative. You can reach really very far in and you can see every bifurcation using kin scope. Uh, then it's very good when you, when you use it with your bronchial map, uh, um, I mean, the bronchial branch tracing. So again, I usually will put it into, I mean, not usually, when we started, we usually put into EMB to, 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 to make sure we are, we are correct. But you can see in this region, EMB really performed very poorly. Uh, all the area are green, which is called the computed or predicted pathway. So they can't really give you that anatomy. So when you go in with EMB, you really have to trust the computer. Whatever they tell you to go, you have to follow strictly. So we're not, we don't really like that. So. Uh, uh, so if you look at it, there's at least three to four bifurcations here, you know, which, has, which is not shown. So they can only detect the big, big airway, which I think everyone can detect as well. So this, this limitation is mainly at the, uh, the automated segmentation of peripheral airway in the uh, distal region. So the resolution of this airway and lung parenchyma, the computer just could not differentiate it. And I think the word is flooding. So when they want to recall it, the whole thing just flood with the lung parenchyma and you can't do it differentially. So only human eyes can actually do that. So I think that's very important. So the last level, the most advanced level, seven generation target, right? Just one case uh, for everyone. So I think this is just two weeks ago, I have a patient with RB1, RB1 SPN, chronic smoker, CEA is raised. Uh, the GI examination is normal, so bilateral. Midastino is quiet. So I think the question would be, is this met? double primary or things like that. So I, we decided better get biopsy from both sides. Uh, if not, our demanding oncologist and surgeon will throw us a lot of questions. So uh, left upper lobe and right upper lobe planning, one flip flip, okay, clockwise 90 degree, counterclockwise 90 degree. So we plan for both sides. We'll just go through the right side first. Okay, you get two. You follow the RB1, you get another two. You get two split like that. And then you get a small one out like that. And then you follow it split again. It's really quite difficult, but yeah. After that, it, you follow that one, it split again. And then it is split again. Yeah, it's split again. It get dilated and split. And then it go in. All right, so I didn't bother to name it because uh, it would be very difficult, but it's very important when we draw it, you draw, uh, you know which bifurcation you are actually drawing because if not, you, you will get confused yourself during the actual bronchoscopic uh, procedure. So this for the right side. Uh, so I first go in with a diagnostic scope. Again, we can already reach RB1. We can only see these two holes. So I change to a tin scope and go in. Uh, and then we can see each replication again as expected. And then we get a very concentric image with a lot of hyper uh, echoic linear arc here, which consistent with what the CT has shown with a lot of dilated A spaces. Okay. So now left side. So split to, sorry, split to two. So we follow the LB1 plus two, split to two. So that one is the lateral branch. We don't want, we, want, we follow up one, get a small one out. And then we split to two again. And then we split to two again. And then split to two again in that direction. And eventually it split and again, and it goes in. All right. So um, you can see that the airway generally they only in distally that they, they usually branch dichotomously, as in they branch two by two by two. They don't branch three four like that. So it's really quite easy, but you have to get the orientation right. So you can really just follow that uh, branching angle. I think it's actually really quite accurate. So this one, again, I, uh, we're going with uh, H190 first. We can't get into it. I change to a thin scope. Then, of course, we can get a very nice concentric lesion. So in this case, we biopsy both sides. 
um, both sides is uh, adeno CA. I think we are still waiting the, the immuno profiling. Um, yeah, so we did it with ETT 8.5 cm, TIVA, uh, Propo 4 and Remy Fentanyl. The total procedure time is 40 minutes, including GA time. So it's not too bad, I, I feel personally, yeah. So this is the actual schematic drawing. Uh, so this is how we draw it. So you can see how I draw is I usually make sure I know the bifurcation. So the lines are either dotted, dotted, or you know, different uh, weight, weightage of the line. So for me to really can, you know, and okay, next is here, next is there, and things like that. Because it's difficult for someone to tell you that because you have to plan it yourself and then you do it yourself. So that's the most accurate thing, I think. Yeah. So the last part, I'll just talk briefly on our experience, which we have published, I think, few years, two years from now. Um, so it's only 98 patients. For now, now I think we have almost, almost 500 already. 18-month um, duration. For this study, we are using the 6.2 millimeter scope with guiding device. Uh, most lesions have bunker sign, uh, 2.67 cm median size, and to purer is around 2.2 cm. So these are how we name the generation of airway. Um, so we can get almost all of them, only one invisible. So we, we cannot get, I don't know why. So we biopsy. So the navigation success is 98.9%. But after biopsy, the clinically conclusive view is only 88.8%. So with a, a discrepancy around 10, which is I think still acceptable. So when we're looking at the uh, relation of airway generation to use such a bidirectional device, navigation success and U. Of course, you can see the discrepancy between U and, sorry, navigation success and diagnostic U is minimal uh, at second generation airway, of course. Third generation, it, it becomes five, and then it grows bigger and bigger and bigger. So in sixth generation airway using a therapeutic scope, we thought we are there, but biopsy only showed that you know, 40, 40, 40 percent of the time you are there. So this is a lot of time due to dislodgement of your guide shift, you know, or things like that, because you are you are actually biopsying biopsy the lesion from a very far distance away. So if you're using a very thin scope to go and park in front of the lesion and bite it, I think that will change everything. Yeah. So our analysis review that you know lesion located within five airway generation is have higher better use, 95 versus 58.8 percent. So yeah. So this is how we do it. So initially we do planning and sketching. So our procedure day is Friday usually. So Thursday we will start drawing. You know, everyone will draw their version. And then on the procedure day itself, we will, everyone will stick on this scope system. And then we will start comparing uh, and discussing and arguing. And then basically we just enjoy the drive, you know, through, through, the, through the target. And our, our efficient nurses are assisting us with biopsy. So yeah, this is how we do it. So the challenges, I think high quality CT is very, very important. If you get this kind of CT where you can see the significant breathing artifact in the lower lobe, you really can't do a good planning because you can't even see the airway. So, you know, you need to consider in this kind of situation, you know, always remember how you do your IOD cases. You might want to scan the patient from caudal to cranial to actually limit the breathing artifact. So you might consider to repeat a scan uh, with a different protocol. Thin slide CT is very important. This is IOD case. Uh, you can see, you know, thin slide, I mean, thick slides, you can't see the airway at all, but with thin slides, one mm, you can see the airway properly. So that's where you can plan, plan things properly. So always, always get a thin slice if possible. So of course, I understand, you know, it might be a challenge just to get a thin slide CT uh, thinly. So another thing is CT workstation. If you have a uh, privilege to use the radiologist workstation, I think that's the best. Uh, you can do a lot of raw data recon and things like that. But of course, a lot of time we don't have that luxury. But again, we, you know, if you're using Windows system, Radiant Dicom is a good platform. If you're using Mac, Horos, or Osirix is a very good platform to actually perform all these uh, analysis. So I think it's good enough. So again, challenges is limited by Bronkerstein. Uh, I would not say it's a challenge because it's also a good thing is that because once you master or you, you are familiar with, with this bronchial branch tracing technique, you start to analyze not just airway, you start to analyze vessel as well. So you start to realize, okay, how this vessel route around the lesion. So like in this case, when I put my radio in, of course, you only get invisible because it just there's no airway going into that lesion. But on analysis on the CT, I know there's no big vessel surrounding it. You know, I know there's another airway going down, things like that. So, but there's no big vessels. So, 
to me, it's very safe. You put in a 21 gauge needle, puncture in, guide our guide shift in, and then you get a concentric image. And in this case, biopsy is a small cell CA. So I think it's, it really helped us uh, to, to build confidence and to analyze things. Uh, and then to, you know, once you have that confidence, you would dare to do more things during the procedure itself. So of course, the, the biggest challenges is the special orientation. Uh, a lot of time, you know, you really need to look at the whole thing in a 3D manner and try to try to try to you know understand how, how things go. So a lot of time it, it might be uh, scary and it, it, you know, but I believe we practice like how we do it, you know, until now I think we are quite confident with this technique. So I think that's all from me. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ko. Uh, it's also an honor that uh, you know your uh, head of department, Dr. T, is also online today, listening to you, and you must be very proud that he is probably online out here. Uh, you make it sound really very, very simple, uh, but uh, for me, I've always wondered if it is as easy as just telling my Alexa or Siri on my iPhone, can you just take me to the target? I hope that day is not too far. Uh, but I think what you have really highlighted to us is basics are very important. And I think uh, there's a lot of technology that is getting pumped into interventional pulmonology. But, you know, it was quite revealing for me for uh, seeing your slides where you actually showed an electromagnetic navigation fail the lesion of the last three branches. So it's very, very interesting. So it just tells us understanding airway anatomy is probably uh, far more basic and can help us get to those targets much better than what technology can help us. Balu, yeah. you can take over from here. Yeah. Uh, that was a wonderful uh, lecture, Dr. Uh, uh, Zesha. So thank you. I'm very, very impressed with uh, the way you have designed your uh, slides and all, because it, it really takes a lot and lot of time to design right. these slides. <laughs> we really appreciate your work. Absolutely wonderful. And to uh, pre-procedure uh, pre evaluation of the reading the whole uh, CT scan really takes um, a bit of time to understand all different types of branching. So which direction will be a, gives me a correct, exactly perpendicular cut. I think that's what the most important point. Exactly if you get a perpendicular cut of the airway, so then absolutely you will not miss the target. The problem yeah. comes when there is an oblique branch or a horizontal branch. Yes. The problem where you <clears throat> find difficulty in analyzing the airway. So we almost follow the same way, but we don't nomenclature uh, do after probably after the fourth generation because I find it very, very uh, after fourth generation to exactly uh, put it in a spatial orientation like anterior, posterior, medial, lateral. So to put it in that uh, perspective, it's very, very difficult. So what we usually do is to identify the branches exactly so that uh, once you go inside the airway, so you should see the same <clears throat> image in your um, pre-procedural uh, CT planning. So if you can get that, I think your job is done. But an excellent work. I should really appreciate your uh, work. Thank you. <laughs> so there are a few questions. So sure. from, from our side, uh, I saw you are using a Radeon DICOM software. Even we all uh, use also the same uh, Radeon DICOM software. Mm. So, so how do you address those uh, motion artifacts? Do you repeat your uh, CT scan if you are uh, very confused or how do you do it? Uh, yeah, so I think of course, you, if you have a luxury to repeat the scan again, I think that would be the best. But of course, I think everyone agree that, you know, if patient come from a different center and things like that, uh, sometimes a lot of time we just have to make do with whatever scan that we have. So yeah, motion artifact, because to minimize it, you know, if you do a scan, because if you're doing a contrast CT scan, they are scanning from head down. So on the single breath hole, when the, when the scanner reach inferior aspect, a lot of times COPD patient, they cannot hold breath anymore. So the lower lobe tends to move and you can't see things. Yes. So if you do on the Hesha CT recon on the IOD way, uh, the CT will be acquired from inferior up. So patient hold breath, they scan lower lobe and up, then of course you minimize the, uh, the movement on the lower lobe. And of course upper lobe, as you know, there's no diaphragm there and there's more rigid up there. The movement is less. So usually that's how, how, how we, we look at it. Uh, if we have a luxury to repeat again, we will repeat again. Yeah. If not, then we just based on our best guess and go, you know? <laughs> yeah. So the next question is, um, 
So how do you identify the vessels inside the, your radiolibus? Like how do you orient that vessel, whether it is an anterior, posterior, or a medial or lateral? How do you orient your vessel if you yeah. find a vessel in the nebus? Understand. So I think Dr. T is very good in this. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we, he, he has been doing quite a lot of, of rod puncturing. So I think the key thing is that, so when we analyze the CT, when we saw there's an airway, I mean, sorry, there's a vessel on top of the airway. So when we put our EBUS in, we used our, we contact the radial EBUS to the wall. So, so by direct vision, we will see where is the vessels. But of course, if you just insert the prop distally without looking at the airway wall, I think it's very difficult to tell us where is the vessels. But on the more proximal uh, kind of lesion, you, you can actually because you are, you, are, you are seeing the airway directly. So by just touching the prop to the airway, you will know where the vessel is. I hope that answers the question. Yeah. The second question is, so now you find an uh, eccentric image. So mm. once you find an eccentric image, how do you plan your uh, puncture with a needle? So we, we don't routinely use needle to puncture because of cost issue. I know Americans do it a lot. So in our center, because we are quite com uh, comfortable with our cryobiopsy, if we got an eccentric lesion and on the CT planning, we know the airway, it only goes into the peripheral of the lesion, we will just put a cryoprop. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I understand, you know, it's, if you put a needle, it might be difficult to get which way to puncture. Exactly. But yeah, I believe if you're using fluoroscopy, I think it will be, you know, a reasonable guide to which way to puncture, I think, yeah. But yeah, we don't do so much of either, so I probably not a good. Dr. Ko, I have a question. In what percentage of your cases, since you have a navigational system, do you use navigation? And uh, before oh. every navigation case, do you also map the airway? You feel the need to map the airway because many of the cases you've shown you map the airway despite having a navigational system. So why do you need a navigational system? Yeah, I, I probably do not want to answer this to not offend anyone. Yeah, but I would say uh, it's complementary. It's complementary. Yeah. So, but even if I have navigation, I would probably still map as a as a backup plan in case I can't find it, you know, or things like that. So, I mean, I was trained by Doctor T to to believe in our own skill rather than believing believing too much on computer. So I think that's that's the aim of what we are doing. Yeah. Always have a backup. Yeah, I don't use a lot of medication, yeah, but I can't tell you the percentage. Right, so Balu, are there any further questions? Yeah. Uh, we end the session? I think we can end the session. There are no further questions. Right. right. Uh, this, is, this is for everyone who has uh, asked the questions in the chat box. I hope this, record, uh, this recording will be available and uh, I think Dr. Kedar can uh, uh, get a link for the, uh, to you later. Yeah, so what I want uh, everybody to know is, yes, we recorded this session and we'll try and, uh, you know, take permission of Dr. Ko and try and see to it that, you know, it's available online for everybody to benefit because the whole goal of this IP basic series was uh, education and education followed by us upskilling ourselves. So this session is extremely important. It's just taught us how to get to the next level with a basic understanding of anatomy. So with all permissions in place, we shall put in the link uh, very soon and I'll, I'll probably communicate with everybody. So thank you again, Dr. Ko, Dr. T who's online, uh, Dr. Balu, my colleague, uh, many of the participants who've taken time out to listen to this particular talk. I hope this has been very useful. We'll try and announce and have some regular sessions on IP basic series. Uh, and we hope to come with new and innovative talks which will help you upskill yourself. Thank you again, Dr. Ko and Balu. Uh, thank you, ladies, and gentlemen, for thank your you. participation. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Zier. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank Hope you. to see you guys physically soon. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you. Sure. <laughs> Goodbye. All right. Thank you. Thank Bye. You.